So, hi, I'm Steve Hassan, and I have with me my friend Dr. Alan Taylor. I know you don't like to call yourself a doctor, but you are, in fact, a doctor. And we've known each other for years from Torah study at, at our temple, uh, Temple Beth Zion. And we've been chatting uh, before and after Torah study, and you've told me about your amazing project. And I said, I really want to help promote promote it. So. First of all, your credentials. Like, who are you? What's your... Well, I'm Alan Taylor. <laughs> I direct the Laboratory for Nutrition and Vision Research at Tufts University's Human Nutrition Research Center on Aging. Okay. It's a unique building in Boston in that our mission is exclusively to understand why people get older and sort of the cell biology about that and what you could do with nutrition mm. to prolong function. Mm -hmm. So my purview is to direct the laboratories that have to do with vision research mm -hmm. and try to understand why people get age-related macular degeneration or cataracts and what you can do with nutrition to prolong the function, delay the onset and progress of those diseases. That's fascinating. So that's my day job. Right. And you told me uh, this a few days ago that you just got back from Israel and I've known about your project there. It's called... A project is called Science Training Encouraging Peace Graduate Training Program and the acronym is STEP. S -T -P. STEP. And our website is step-gtp.org. Step-gtp. GTP. Yeah, maybe what you want to know is that GTP was supposed to be a joke. GTP is part of the machinery that makes your cells function. Oh. So I thought graduate training program, GTP, people would realize that there was a lot of energy involved, but most people don't, don't, know, don't know what GTP is. So I'm right. afraid the joke has been lost. So, but I want to just highlight the reason I feel so compelled to interview you and promote your work is because you really believe in promoting peace and connectivity between people and bringing people together with science right. and mentoring and teaching right. as opposed to the mess that's in the Middle East where people are so polarized and there's so much anger and hate and fear. You've really been walking the walk and I'm so moved by your work to actually go to dangerous places and promote peace. Right. So say, say how you got interested. Well, or how you came I, I was up actually with the brought idea. up in a Zionist family mm. and in fact my sister moved to Israel so long ago I can barely remember it, in 1959 mm. when I was just a little boy. Wow. And uh, our family has been very interested in the survival and progress of Israel. Mm. And I was a senior Fulbright fellow there about 15 years ago. Mm. And I also fell in love with Israel again. Mm -hmm. And when I left, I asked myself, what could I do to help Israel? Mm -hmm. And it was pretty clear at that point that wars just were never going to be the answer to the problem because the problem wasn't going to go away. No matter how many wars we succeeded in, we Israelis, um, we're still going to have to have a different kind of a solution. Mm -hmm. And the solution, it seemed to me, the only solution was that people really have to make peace. Mm -hmm. And to make peace, you have to make peace with your enemy. Mm -hmm. To make peace with your enemy, you have to know your enemy. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there has to be a return on that investment. If somebody's going to engage in an interaction with an enemy, mm -hmm. there has to be a return on that investment. Mm -hmm. So we asked ourselves, who are we? to really start a peace program. And at this point, Kim came in to the act. To the act and Kim we, is your wife, Kim, who's wife. doing the camera work. Right. Hi, Kim. And um, we actually went to Israel for two years, each time for several weeks, and interviewed a lot of people, mm -hmm. and asked them, said, if we began a program, what kind of program should it be? And who are we as Americans to start a program between Israelis and Palestinians? Mm -hmm. So the program we came up with, since we know a lot of high power scientists in Israel and also it's based on the philosophy that science knows no borders and disease knows no walls. So it's whether a you're pursuit of truth. Whether you're Palestinian or Israeli, you may get diabetes. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, scientists like to work together and they're usually not impeded by politics or frequently. Mm -hmm. So we asked all the people we knew in Israel um, and some Palestinians as well, is it appropriate to try to use science to broker and leverage 
the situation to create a peaceful situation where si young Israeli and Palestinian scientists could work together. Right. So science training encouraging peace came out of those interviews and now we've been running it for several years and the the plan is that science training and encouraging peace will help defray tuition costs mm -hmm. for young Israeli and Palestinian scientists who want to work as a pair and the critical thing and unique aspect mm -hmm. of STEP is that they work as a pair for prolonged periods of time maybe two or three years mm -hmm. as they get a master's degree or a PhD or an MD such that they want to advance their own careers, everybody's personally involved and benefiting from the program, and two, delivering healthcare, enhanced healthcare capacities to their communities. And then the plan is that the communities will see the benefit of the cooperation, and everybody will benefit from having worked together and see the benefits of coexistence. So just to be clear, you're, you're pairing a Palestinian graduate student or with an Israeli, with exactly. an Israeli right. and tasked to do a, a research project right. together. So, so they, they work together for a period of two to three years. So they get to know each other they, as human beings. In addition to getting to know each other, they become mutually interdependent. Mm -hmm. And even when the chips are down, they must rely on one another and know that they can rely on one mm -hmm. another, both for their own personal gain as well as their community's gain and to keep their fellowship. Mm -hmm. and the results are just amazing. You wouldn't believe how enthusiastic the students are and how committed. When everything looks so bleak, our mm -hmm. students tell us, please continue this program. We are totally committed to the program. And we want to be ambassadors. So there's some cases right. where the, the pairs don't really need us because they're in the lab already. They have to be in the lab. And we ask them, why do you want to be part of STEP? Mm -hmm. And they say, because we want to be ambassadors to show the world that this is possible. Mm -hmm. So that the world word gets out that plant programs like STEP can contribute additional value to the, any kind of negotiation because the governments just aren't going to do it. This is going to be a relationship that has to build from the... Planet. And both are role models to their respective exactly. communities as well as the globe. Exactly. What a wonderful idea. It so moves me I'm, to tears. To I'm delighted that you're interested in it. You know. No, it's and and for me, I you know I, I help people with cults and brainwashing and totalistic ideologies where the devil is after them. So there's right. this really intense insular uh, contraction and dependency on some external authority figure to define reality. And part of the solution to that mentality is teaching science, teaching how do you create a hypothesis, how do you test it, how do you reality test, how do you check in <laughs> with your own critical thinking, your own conscience, yeah. you know, how do you step into the shoes of somebody right. else and look from a different perspective. Yeah. I think part of scientific innovation demands that we look at problems from different perspectives. So since we just came back, I'll tell you a personal story, not my own personal story, but a story that was of concern to me that really reflects on what you're talking about mm -hmm. in terms of understanding somebody else's reality. Mm -hmm. And that is we were concerned that some of our students, and we just organized a student advisory board, so mm -hmm. they would tell us how to improve STEP. And one of our Israeli students felt like she couldn't participate in public. And we were annoyed about that. Mm -hmm. And her Palestinian partner was the one who defended her and said, you have to understand her position at this time. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that she cannot be public, and we are still in total contact. Mm -hmm. And the, so the bond that was made mm -hmm. because of their step experience and their graduate studies really is retained and enduring. And the other thing to appreciate is mm -hmm. that this becomes sort of an intergenerational right. situation in which, or intergenerational benefit, in which like a mentor takes on a student, the student takes on another student, and it, it, there's a promul promulgation of mm -hmm. the philosophy and the cooperation over multi-generations of laboratories, and as a scientist you know that people are, are, are traveling all the time and flexible. And so they continue to spread the word about these kind of programs, so I think there's a lot more power than it would initially appear with several couples involved. Yeah, and in my opinion, this is the only hope yeah. for our planet, spaceship Earth, for the people right. to live together, is to find commonality, 
to find humanity, to actually talk to each other mm -hmm. and understand different ethnic and cultural and religious traditions and backgrounds, but, but think about what's going to improve the human species and the planet sure. through understanding how the body works, mm -hmm. how nutrition works, and etc. I'm just thrilled that you're doing this work and I can't thank you enough. I wonder, is there, we're going to show a, a video, I guess, that describes Steph sure. and shows some of your students. Um, anything else that you'd like to add? Kim is going to speak. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you could talk about the kinds of issues that are cross-border issues that, in addition to the students being cross-border, why it's important for them to study those issues. Like zoonotic diseases? And or? diabetes. Yeah, and okay, so... Thank um, you, Kim. Yeah, so... It's important to understand that our diets throughout the world are changing, mm -hmm. which I'm sure you know as much about as I do and you I see it as you, travel, you study nutrition. The world. Um, so, for instance, places like China are getting more calories now, India are getting more calories, and interestingly enough, they're going from a, a people who previously were facing starvation to now a large proportion of, of, of their cohort and their population are being overfed. Mm. And our genes just aren't ma made to handle that. And so the rates of diabetes are going up astronomically. So interestingly, when we asked about the same kind of situation between Israelis and Palestinians, Palestinians are now approaching 20% diabetes rate. Mm. The Palestinian society will collapse mm. if they have to sustain and treat that kind of number of, 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 of diabetics. So one of our star candidates, in fact, one of our star participants, mm -hmm. is the director of diabet diabetology in one of the prominent Palestinian hospitals. Mm -hmm. And of course, Israelis are now also seeing increased rates of diabetes. So here you have a border fence between the two people, but the disease is crossing. The disease doesn't know anything about the fence. Right. And, the, and the people who study together also don't want the fence to be there because the science part doesn't know a border. Right. So they can cooperate in order to conquer a disease that itself is never going to be contained by fences. Mm -hmm. Then we have another pair who are doing zoonotic diseases. These are diseases that are transferred from, say, cattle to people. And oh, those right. two don't know a border fence. So we have Israelis and Palestinians working on projects like in the Negev, in the desert, where the Bedouins travel back and forth across the lands. And they too are devising ways to control these zoonotic diseases. Mm -hmm. A third one, which is crucial, and mm -hmm. you see this in the newspaper every day, even when you don't know it, is that there's disaster management. Mm -hmm. you know, we think about earthquakes. So they have developed a program of informing first responders how to respond to an earthquake. But you and I know that mm -hmm. earthquakes don't happen that often. But wars do, mm. and they happen all too often. And so what we have now is a pair that has designed probably the most used website that tells first responders during an emergency how to coordinate, like firefighters, police, army, wow. people deliver health care. And an Israeli de designed this uh, website, and his, his, his Palestinian partner is now translating it to Arabic oh, so that both the Palestinians and the Israelis will benefit from this and it's also of course in English and as I mentioned it's already the most consulted website for emergency management. Now the other th wonderful thing about this is that this website is designed in a way that no government can block it. Oh. So it's available to all the people all the time, 24-7. So these are the kind of things you get out of I want to learn how to do that website so that all the cults of the world, including right. North it Korea and others, to your, to your business, can't right. block it. Exactly. Well, it's, it's really about, so, you know, information should be public for right. everyone to use for the betterment mm -hmm. of, of our planet and for our children and our grandchildren. And uh, yeah. too many, too many powers that want money and greed are are trying to control information, and direct people to do things that are against their best interests yeah. or the planet's best interest. Yeah. So it's interesting that there's a, a a nexus of your interests and our interests because everybody wants we want to make the planet a better place to be, and uh, be it through psychology and rescuing people from cults or trying to 
get beyond the governments that seem to be cults unto themselves well, that's... so we could get by and then really create a better world. It's, it's right. wonderful to see this nexus and the synergy come together. Right, you know, so just... All cause... because of Torah quest. <laughs> exactly, and asking questions right. and challenging what we're reading in the script. We just, the, 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 the parasha that we just looked at, it right. could be misread so easily to justify right. violence. Right. And it probably is by radical Jews or, or Muslims or others who don't understand. It, it's a it, the Torah is a document meant to be understood through interpretation, rabbinic understanding, and not just read literally uh, and mindlessly as well. Um, so thank you so thank much you for so your much. great work. Keep thank you. going. And thank you, you Kim, for time all time your support. This. Yeah. And uh, and we'll add some videos and we'll do, and we'll uh, we'll do this again maybe soon. Thank you.